what's up everybody welcome back to the channel I got a great video for you today today we are going to be talking about how the Honda Grom ruined motor vlogging so stay tuned it's going to be an awesome video So guys, I am on my way to my local motorcycle dealership. I got to order some parts uh, for one of the Triumphs I'm working on. And I found out that my fuel pump recall has not been done on this Grom. So I'm going to talk about that too, see if I can get that scheduled. Uh, but yeah, so the main point of this video guys was to talk to you about the Honda Grom ruining motor vlogs. And I'm going to jump right in here and give you my thoughts on it. At the end of the video, feel free to go down below there, leave me a comment, let me know if you, let me know if you think I'm full of it, or if you agree, or maybe even another uh, aspect to the situation that you kind of see and you might want to bring to the table for discussion. So it's undeniable that the Honda Grom was a fad. It was a motorcycle that basically once it came onto the scene, it blew up overnight. The Grom was released in 2014 here in the States, and it seems like almost every motor vlogger, the big name guys, had to have one, and that sparked a trend that just spiraled out of control. The age group that the Honda Grom is sold to would be what we consider probably the millennials, people that use the internet as a form of research to uh, learn about a product before they purchase it. So the Honda Grom, that's kind of what sold it was the internet and uh, so everybody was kind of like you know seeing this Honda Grom thing and word started getting out that it was a very cheap motorcycle uh, something that you could walk into your dealership with around you know thirty four hundred dollars and buy it and walk out the door or you could very easily finance it for so it, it just kind of exploded the popularity of it so you take into consideration and you couple the fact that this motorcycle was a very cheap alternative with also the combined popularity between the motor vlogging community, it's actually pretty obvious uh, why so many people bought the Honda Grom and made YouTube channels. And the thing of it was is these people that were doing their research or watching motor vlogs on Honda Groms before they purchased them were kind of seeing all the fun things you could do and different mods that you could do and they just was like hey I bought the bike for a really cheap deal let's go out buy a GoPro and a microphone and strap it to my helmet and we'll be able to do what these big guys are doing and in a way that theory is right anybody can do that um, but what it takes is it takes good content and if you don't have good content then you're not gonna make it as a moto vlogger it's just that simple puppies puppies so the Honda Grom brought about this wave of motor vloggers that were just starting out. And as anybody knows, when you first start a YouTube channel as a motor vlogger, your content sucks. That's just the way it is. And I'm not saying that my channel has the best content because obviously I'm not a big channel. Now, however, that being said, there's a lot worse than I am. I actually put a lot of time into my videos editing them. Uh, and uploading them and making them so it's a, it's a little bit of a process that you have to be willing to do you can't just go out and record everything you do throw it up and expect for 10,000 people to follow you it, it's not that easy it's definitely a job that requires some work to be put in so as I said, you have a lot of these people that that's, what, that's all they did was they took their content that was raw footage from their camera and they threw it up there on YouTube hoping to be an overnight success. And the Honda Grom especially is one of those motorcycles that is just terrible, terrible. The reputation uh, for motor vloggers that ride Groms is kind of bad because when you search Honda Grom, you're going to get one of three videos you're gonna either get a mod video where somebody's installing aftermarket parts you're gonna get a review video where somebody is test riding one 
and talking about it or a dealership or you're gonna have the third one and that's a motor vlog and nine times out of ten that motor vlog that you click on it sucks it has zero thought put into it to put it together uh, and if it does it's just very poorly put together so that kind of cuts down on a lot of your traffic a lot of people don't want to watch that kind of video or they'll click on it and they'll click back off of it within you know 20 30 seconds of the video uh, statistics prove that you want to capture your audience within the first 15 seconds of your video and if you don't do that well your channel is kind of kind of screwed because there's no way to grow and improve I bet that guy's going to the Indian dealer so guys it's definitely something that you have to um, be willing to put some effort and time into it's also something that you know not everybody's cut out to do motor vlogs I mean it definitely takes uh, a skillful person so in most cases like anything else as soon as something starts to get washed up and overdone it no longer has its popularity and its sense of uh, success and that's exactly what has happened with the Grand motor vlogging scene it just it it's been overdone and beat to death it's kind of beating a dead horse now I'm kind of a hypocrite to this because obviously I'm riding a Honda Grom today making a motor vlog so whether or not I really have a clear view on the situation is kind of in the air no a Honda Grom is not the only motorcycle that I ride I also ride a 1963 Triumph T120 Bobber that I built and I ride a 1999 Triumph Legend TT and I make motor vlogs on those as well. Now, as you can see, I'm an open-minded person. I do not discriminate against any kind of motorcycle and I ride with them all. So that being said, I'd like to say that that accounts for something as far as my viewpoints. I'm not completely blinded by the fact that I'm riding on a Honda Grom today. Uh, so I, I kind of, and I have my fair share of watching motor vlogs. So I'm pulling up here to the dealership. I'm gonna go in here and talk to them and we'll pick up this conversation when I get back. Bye bye. Seven hours later. All right guys, so I just uh, got my two Triumph parts ordered and uh, scheduled my, or ordered my fuel pump that has the recall on it. I uh, said it'd be about uh, Thursday or so when it comes in, then he'll give me a call and we schedule it. Something I should be able to just wait on. So I'm gonna pull this around front here. How's it going? Start that thing out or what? I just got it, yeah. Hell oh, yeah, start it out, man. That uh, thing's awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah, I... A whole group of rides these if you want to know about them. Here in the area? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look, you got an Instagram or Facebook? Yes, sir. Eventually. Send him a friend request. Awesome. Yeah, brother, my name's Zach. My name's Zach. Hey, Zach, good to meet you, brother. All right, let's get a little, let's get a little wheelie going here. A little squirrely. <laughs> All right. So as I was saying, guys, um, I am not blinded by the fact that I'm on a Grom. So actually, the Grom is the odd man out in my garage. Uh, it's different. Let's do a little screech. So in my opinion, the reason and the way that the Honda Grom killed motovlogging or ruined it, I guess you could say, was just simply because so many people that had that motorcycle uploaded crappy content and kind of made it hard for people to see the good and enjoy the genre of motovlogging because they had to sift through all this crap to get to the good stuff. So guys, that's my synopsis of the situation. Go ahead, write me a hate comment down there how, oh, this guy doesn't know shit. He's just talking out his butt. You know, give me some feedback. I don't care if it's hate. Just let me know kind of what you think and if you agree. Uh, and as always, guys, I appreciate you watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave me a like and uh, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.